Hello, everyone. My name is Lourdes Chavez, and I am with Early Learning Connections, Child Care Resource and Referral. And today we are going to be talking about Winter Wonderland. It's all about having fun, learning, practicing skills during the winter time. So feel free to ask any questions or send us an email. Uh, after this presentation, you will get a survey. Please, please, please fill it out, send it back to us. We greatly appreciate that part. Next slide, please. So winter can be a time of learning and playing, but mostly it's a time to have fun. Do you remember those cold mornings when you really did not want it to get out of bed, but then you saw the snow on the ground. And even though the days were short, as soon as you saw the snow on the ground, you wanted to get up and go outside, build a snowman. You were tagging on your coat, you were pulling on your hat, pulling on your boots, couldn't wait to get to that snow. Well, now that we're older, we are a little hesitant to go out, but our children are still the same. Icy cold mornings, fresh fallen snow, short days. And then we have those children that are bored. What to do, what to do. But it is a perfect formula to build memories and to learn. Winter can be fun and it can also be a time of learning. Winter offers many opportunities for children to be active and engaged. As parents, we want for our children to continue learning year around. Isn't that true? Definitely it is. As adults, on days when it's cold and freshly snow has fallen, most of us just think about shoveling the snow before it gets dark or it gets colder. Isn't that the truth? Today, we are going to explore activities we can do with our children during the winter. The activities will reduce the boredom in children and will have, and the children will have fun and will want to do it over and over again. Just remember children and the adults need to dress for the weather. We need to put on those warm coats, warm mittens, hats, boots, and if our feet get wet or we get wet, we have to go inside and put on some dry clothes. Just thinking about safety, you know? The next slide, please. Play isn't the opposite of work. Play allows great work. Play does not distract from learning, it is learning. Play does not diminish seriousness. It encourages a level of intrinsically motivated engagement that makes seriousness possible. And you ask, how could it be? When children are playing, children are learning. They are not considering work. It is something that it permits them to explore, to expand on their knowledge and actually learn increases that learning. So you can uh, say, what are you talking about? And you might wonder, how could that be? I say children need to play, manipulate, smell, and use all of their senses to understand the world around them and to learn about the world we live in. Children relieve stress, anger, happiness, worry, you know, all those things, strong emotions, when they go out and play. Remember, Children do not come home from school or from an activity or daycare and say, I'm all stressed. They don't say that. They invite you to play. Come and put a puzzle together with me. Let's go outside and build a snowman. That's how they express themselves. And why not? Let's go outside and build a snowman. Let's do some jumping around to get rid of that stress. It's, it's beneficial for the children and it's beneficial for us as adults. Next page, please. So, outdoor activities. We have some that are good, reliable ones, and then we have others. So you perhaps have heard of some of these, perhaps not, um, but in our next slides, we'll go more into it. But some of the ones that we're gonna talk about is gonna be like the winter collage book. 
And who made those tracks? Ice cream scoops, crystallized bubbles, snowball target practice. Hand and eye coordination goes with the snowball target practice. Snowman hat trick. And that can cover planning, coordination, predictions, so many things. Snow moles, so interesting and so much fun. Next slide, please. Winter collage book. Even without colorful spring flowers, the winter environment is still a great place to build a natural collage out of nature things. Go on on a winter walk in the woods with your students or your children and tell them to collect any twig, leaves, and rocks that they want to add to their collage. Bring along some color pencils and have them draw a tree or any winter animal that they can find. Then write down observations of the objects next to their pictures. How do they smell? How big are they? What do they feel like? You can also take pictures to document the place you explore and other winter objects that your child may, be, may have missed. When you take back, when you go back, take with you the picture, leave, na leave the nature or natural pieces outside. First, you're not gonna drag all that snow, sand into the house. Secondly, nature needs to be outside, but you have that picture that picture that you took, which your child can share with others or just with their siblings, or better yet, it can be email to the grandparents, other relatives, so they can see it, to see that um, artistic side of your child, because every child is an artist in their own way. Next picture, next slide, please. Who made those tracks? be an animal detective for a day and go outside hunting for wildlife, wild tracks, solving the mystery of who made those tracks can be incredibly fun and allow children to practice their observational skills. An animal, animal field guide will be a great tool to bring along. If you have it with you, that guide, and you're going on a walk, and then you happen to see a feather, think about it. Who has feathers? What kind of animal has feathers? And who, oh, give them this open-ended question. Whose feathers do you think it is? And then what kind of animals have feathers? So keep opening that curiosity, that curiosity door, so they know what it is. When you're going on that walk, ask them, Put your binoculars on and take a really close look at the ground. What do you see? What do you spy? And sometimes you will find the footprints of a raccoon. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you will find deer. It depends on where you're walking. But out there is a world of so many different possibilities. And with the curiosity of the children, they can come true. And while they're doing that, they're having fun, they are learning, they're building memories. It is amazing and it is so much wonderfully um, achieved. Next slide, please. Ice cream scoops, oh, one of my favorites. So you can go outside and you can ask the child, can you build an enormous ice cream cone? You can either draw a ice cream cone and then give the child an ice cream scooper and they can collect ice cream scoops from the snow, make them into scoops and add them on to the cone that you have on the ground. It doesn't necessarily have to be a perfect cone nor a perfect scoop, but just making that scoop on top of it and for the child to think that he's building or she's building an ice cream cone, mmm, delicious. You can even ask them, what flavors are you putting there? And they will tell you. And then you can count the scoops and then you're incorporating math 
And when you're counting the scoops, you can say, well, how many more scoops do you think you can fit in there? And they'll start scooping away. They will definitely love it. One of the things that you can do if you want to make the, the uh, scoops colorful, add a little color to the snow, and then it can create some those colorful scoops. Um, just a little thing. If you're using color, please wear, let the child wear old mittens because you don't want their new mittens to get stained. So next slide, please. Crystallized bubbles. Ooh, look, that is a beautiful science project that can happen outside. But remember, this can only happen or you can only crystallize when it is uh, freezing, when it is below zero. So be careful being outside too long. Wear really warm weather, um, clothes, excuse me, so you can stay warm and just be outside for a little bit. So this is a good science lesson. When the temperature dips below the freezing point, many changes occur in our environment. Water turns to ice and rain turns to snow. So it takes a lot of science, but it is a wonderful thing. When the temperature dips below freezing point, many changes occur in our environment. Water turns to ice and rain turns to snow. The bubble activity demonstrates this. It is a good idea to first chill the containers of bubble solution in the refrigerator. Outside, it has to be below freezing temperature. Have children observe the bubbles closely as they blow, and they will notice as they're blowing that the bubbles begin to crystallize before they hit the ground. And once they start crystallizing, you can tell the different colors. Who would have thought that a bubble would have all those beautiful colors? And then with gentle hands, they can actually touch those bubbles. And then they can, then you can ask them, how do they feel? And they will notice that that bubble does not pop. So isn't it amazing? And they'll continue to want to do it over and over again. So be prepared with a bubble solution. Then you can start talking to them about liquids turning into ice and when the temperature changes, what happens? But when you have those conversations, make sure you do it inside because remember this activity requires that it is below freezing outside in order for the bubbles to crystallize. Next slide, please. Oh, one of the most favorite things to do. In the winter, as you know, kids and adults like to throw snowballs what a pleasure it is to be outside to be a kid and be throwing those snowballs so the snowball practice in the winter kids and adults like to throw a snowball place a snowball target in a conspicuous place where it is fine to throw snowballs making sure the rules are established and understood no one gets hurt by having those rules established and being understood it is a great source of exercise for all kids and even for us adults with emotion. Even those that are not athletically inclined will enjoy it. This is also a way to get the snowball directed at safe spots and not at other children. So when we have a target, we let the children know that the snowball has to be thrown to that target. Can they actually hit the target? And you'll see the children loving doing that. No snow, don't worry about it. In some places or sometimes even here, we don't have snow, but take a piece of paper and just roll it up into a bowl and then you can throw it. It's not gonna go very far, but still they have the same motion by throwing it. And it is a safe way to do it. Um, Next slide, please. Oh, this is another fun one too. Snowman hat tricks. So you can ask a child or you can help as well. Let us go and build a plump snowman in the yard. 
So you build your snowman, you know, and then you say, now let's see if we can throw his hat like a frisbee and it will land on his head. Can we do that? Offer them a challenge like that and keep trying. And the kids would love it. Throwing that hat, see if it, if it lands on the snowman's ha head. And if it doesn't, they're just going to laugh and go try it again and try it again. Um, one little thing on this, if you're doing this with um, younger children, make sure the snowman is not too tall so they're able to throw the hat and have a greater possibility of landing the hat on the snowman. So, but it is so much fun. Adults like it too. And um, the children would love it. Next one, next slide. But let us not forget about our traditional ones. Making snow angels. How many of you remember putting on your coats, going outside and making snow angels on that freshly fallen snow? You come in the house and you f are feeling tired, cold, ready for some cocoa and ready to take off your snow pants, your, your coat, your hat and everything and just enjoying that cocoa after a long day of making snow angels outside. The next one will be older kids pulling the younger kids on sled. How many of you did that? I know when my sisters and I, we were outside, we used to live in Chicago. So back in the day, there was a lot of snow and we just had a ball. And when we went inside, my mom always had a cup of hot cocoa waiting for us. No marshmallows, she didn't believe in that. So, um, but it was a lot of fun. And then taking a thermos of hot chocolate outside, just, enjoying those sun, rare sunny days uh, that winter has to offer and having a sip or two of hot chocolate when it's cold outside. And sometimes that is even helpful for us adults to just relax and take a few sips of hot chocolate outside and just listen to the quietness that winter has to offer. Then we also have wintertime nature scavenger hunt. And we talk a lot, a little bit about that, but it could be anything that you wanted just to take a walk, stepping on the snow and hearing it, that crunchiness that it makes when you step on it. And then building houses, igloos or forts outside. How many of us did that? And then why limit ourselves to making snowman? Why not make a snowwoman, an animal, a superhero? Yes, a superhero too. And continue to build according to our imagination, letting them just build. It doesn't have to look like anything. They could just put snow on top of snow, pack it in and just leave it there. It's their creation, it's their art. They're having fun, they're exploring space. They're exploring the wetness of the snow as they keep touching it. It kind of mel melts a little and how their mittens are getting wet, how their snow pants are getting wet. And yes, I know for us adults, that is something that, oh my goodness, is more laundry, is more things that we have to put out to dry, but it's something that it is fun for them. Remember, they're not just working, they are learning and that's how it needs to be for them. They're building memories, being outside and doing so many different activities. Next slide, please. Now let's talk about indoors because yes, we can have fun indoors in the winter time. Remember our days are shorter so we can do other things indoors as well. So while it is cold outside, inside can be toasty, warm and fun. So let us explore some of those activities outside. Oh, I'm sorry, inside. Next slide. So winter activities indoors. 
Who says piñatas are only for parties, birthday parties, and only in the summertime? You can have a piñata party inside as well. You do not need guests. You ju it's just the kids inside. Take a paper bag, a little, you know, lunch paper bag. Fill it with whatever you would like to put in there. Uh, tie it. Find a safe space in your living room, wherever you want to do it. And l let the children, you know, open the space. So there's enough space for the children to do. And let the children take a whack at it. See what they can do to it. And the children would love it. They'll have a ton of memories and a ton of fun. Because who has a piñata indoors? Not too many people do. But you can do that. And having it in a uh, lunch paper bag, it's little, it's not that big. But the idea is there and they'll enjoy it. They, they would love it. Next slide, please. Oh, how about a seasonal tic-tac-toe? Yes, and you can make it as big as you like. You can make it as little as you like. It depends on your space, but it's really simple to do. You can take a towel that you no longer want and just either draw with a Sharpie, or if you want to get really fancy, use some ribbon, stitch it on to create it, and then um, your markers can be something fancy like this, the reindeer and the snowman, or you can have cutouts that are winter characters and they can use those. Or even yet, you can ask your child to help you find those markers, whether it be from a magazine, whether it be from uh, something that you want to print from the internet, whichever you would like. And then if they need to cut it out, give them a pair of scissors, sit with them and show them how to cut it and just enjoy that game of tic-tac-toe. It could be something that children find it amusing and sometimes it can become a really challenge because they're really strategizing how to get it done. They're really thinking about it because they want to win. They want to they wanna be able to be successful. So it could be a lot of fun. Next slide, please. The Penguin Shuffle. This is an indoor race that challenges kids balance the penguin style. So how fun is that? This one, it is where the children will put a bean bag, will put something uh, like an egg or things like that in between their feet and then they try to walk to get from one end from one place to another and that is a lot of fun because let me tell you it's not easy walking with something between your feet and the children would love it but again it's they're practicing that balancing skill so it is a lot of fun they'll want to do it over and over again and how easy is that? It doesn't require cleaning. It doesn't require a lot of things. Just having either a bing bag, anything that you would like to use for them that is safe to put between their leg, their feet so they can walk and try to get from one end to the other end of the room. It will be, I guarantee you, really fun. Next slide, please. Oh, pass the eyes. Yes. And this play kind of like a hot potato. But in the traditional hot potato, you know, people are out. And this one's because we're talking with children past the eyes. So the children have an ice cube and they're passing it. You're playing music. When the music stops, whomever's holding the eyes is it. And the other children just clap for that child, whether it be the siblings, whether it be adults, just clap for that child because they have the eyes. And that is fun too, mainly because they have an ice cube in their hands. <laughs> Next slide, please. And this one is for uh, older children, make a sock snowman. And that is where you take a sock, you take glue, 
um, and stuffing for a pillow or cottons. And I have the directions in the handout. Oh, that reminds me, we have a handout for all the games that we talked about. So you get to actually see step-by-step -step on how to display and the cautions that might be involved as well. But this one is more for older children because you're talking about buttons, you're talking about glue, you're talking about um, little pieces that the little ones uh, should not be using just because it might be dangerous. But this one's I will recommend them for children. Um, I would say mm, second, third grade and up. And they would love having it because who would not like to have a snowman that looks that cute? Look at that. Cuteness, cuteness. Next slide. This one is also a fun one to have. So this is about following directions. So you give a child a piece of paper, pencil, crayon, anything that you would like them to use. And then they're sitting at the table, you know, uh, and then you say, okay, so we are going to play this game and I'm going to tell you what to do, but you are going to close your eyes and you're going to build a snowman. And then you give them a set of directions like draw a small circle at the top of the paper. The children, have, the child or the children have their eyes closed and they're going to draw, draw a bigger circle under the small one and they'll draw it. Draw the biggest circle under the middle one and that's what they're going to do. Draw three buttons in the middle circle. So they're gonna draw, remember they, stay, they still have their eyes closed. Draw two eyes, a mouth and a carrot nose and top circle. So they're gonna do that. You're gonna give them enough time to get it done in between each direction. And then when they open their eyes, they're gonna see what they drew. And most of the time it's not gonna look like a snowman just because their eyes are closed. But how much fun is that? That they get to see how they are able to draw things um, without having their eyes open. And then you might wanna talk to them about the importance of sight and taking care of their eyes. And they would wanna do it over and over and over again for sure. Next slide, please. So this one, smiling snowman envelopes. Not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be a snowman, but how many of us receive so many em um, envelopes in the mail and then we end up throwing them away? Well, let's recycle them. Let the children draw on them, whatever they would like to draw. And then sometimes um, when they draw, they, they can make also another little note and put it inside the envelope. And whether, uh, they can be given to someone else when they're playing mailman or, or I should say post office, or they can also send them when you go visit the grandparents, you know, put them in their mailbox. Sometimes I know right now we cannot actually go visit, but we can put them in mailboxes and it will cheer someone's day. So that is always nice to recycle as opposed to just throwing them away um without seeing what other use could it be the envelopes can, the envelopes can also be used to store different things so just thinking about it instead of saying well i don't have paper for my child to draw let's use the envelopes that we received in the mail and that would be helpful next slide please and again let us not forget about movie and hot cocoa we can do that indoors or doing puzzles or a blanket tent. You know, people use the chairs and then we put the blankets and it becomes a tent. Playing with Play-Doh or a sensory walk. A sensory walk is really fun. So in a Ziploc bag, you can put whatever you would like that is sensory, whether it be hair gel, whether it be um Anything else that you would like, pa paper that it crumbles up and you put it in the bags, seal it. Make sure you seal it with tape. If you're putting hair gel, do not put a lot, just enough to make that squishiness. And then the child can walk over those. 
and being careful that not to ruin your floors, obviously. Um, but that is something that they can do and they wanna do it over and over again. Next slide, please. So this is our team. This is my uh, our team from Early Learning Connections. We have other magnificent ladies and we also have other trainings that will be coming up, another workshop for parents. So be on the lookout for that. And like I said before, you will receive a um, evaluation. Feel free to complete it, a survey. We would thank you from the bottom of our hearts when you do that. And we need to know how we did. And also let us know what kind of workshops are you interested in seeing and we'll get it done. Next slide, please. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And again, this is Lourdes Chavez from Child Care Resource and Referral, Early Learning Connections. Check us out in our webpage and also Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We are very much social. Thank you very much.